Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless, and this is my third in a series of smart objects with Affinity Photo. So I pulled this balloon in from stock photos, and I masked it and rasterized it. So all it is is a solid picture of, of a balloon. And then I just typed letters on top. So I wrote, it's a girl, and that's it, and I grouped it. Now that I have this grouped, I'm going to select that layer and duplicate it with Controller Command J. So now I have another layer, another version. So I'll shut off the first one, and let's open this one up. And this one, instead of it's a girl, I want it to say it's a boy. So B-O-Y. And I, of course I want the balloon not to be that color. So I can go to adjustments, hue and saturation. I'm going to pick one of the reddish, the pinkish color, this closest color to this. And I'm going to do a color picker right here and just drag it so I can get that group. And I'm going to slide this over and make it a blue. I think a pale blue like that looks pretty good. So now we have two groups. It's a boy and it's a girl. And I'm going to save that. And I already saved that as balloons, so I'm just going to resave it. So now let's open up a new document. I'll say print. And for this, I'm just going to do 96 DPI. So it's a brand new document. And I am going to do file, place. And I'm going to place those, that balloon file right here. And let's decide where we want to put it. Um, let's say like maybe right here. And it says it's a girl. So now we're going to duplicate this. And we come up, control or command J. I can move this around. Control or command J, control or command J, as many as you want. So I'm just starting with that. And I'm going to start just rearranging some of them. Um, some might want to be in the front like that. Uh, maybe this one wants to be in the front. I'm just going to move that one up. Um, I'll duplicate this one again, maybe move that one here. And now I'm going to also, let's do one more in the back. And let's do that and move it to the back. I think that's a good group. So now, with, now that I have the selection tool, if I click on this right here, it says enable transform origin. I'm going to enable that and that shows this little dot in the middle. Let's get a close up of that just so you can see. Hold on. So if I click this, you could see the dot here. I'll pick another one because I already moved it. Without it, there's no dot in the middle with it. It's showing the dot. So I am going to do this, which means now if I move this, it moves it from the stem. I'm going to do the same on each of these. I'm just going to rock them a little bit like that maybe. And this one, how about this way? I don't want them all facing the same way. This one could come up a little and imagine where it will be. I'm thinking right about there. And this one, right about here. So you get the idea. We don't want them all to be straight because we want to imagine that the string is holding them up. So I think that's pretty good. I think I actually want another one right about here even it off and then i'll move this this way a little bit so that looks good i like that so let's group these and that's how balloons group i'm going to call it balloon now let's give it a background so let's get a new pixel layer and i'm going to do gradient tool i'm going to go like this and I want it to be a kind of a neutral background. I don't want it to be a girl or a boy. So maybe I think they use yellow when they're not sure. I don't want it so bright either. So something pale like that looks pretty good to me, I think. Or we could even use a kind of a grayish like that. That's not bad either. I think I'll go with the gray. I kind of like that. And let's give it a little bit darker on top. And I'm okay with that. So that's the background. We're just gonna, we'll just lock that in. Now above the background, I'm gonna add another pixel layer. And then I'm taking my brush, and I think I'll give the brush maybe a 
two point pixel. And I think I'll make it fairly hard, um, maybe 72. And I want it to be in white. Now imagine before we do that, imagine, let's take some guides out here. Hold on. Let's take some guides out. Imagine that the string goes to there and let's say here. So that's what we're going to try and have all the strings follow. So let's go back to that brush. It's two pixels. I don't know if that's going to be good enough. I'm going to get a close up right here. And I'm going to click once right where this part of the thing is and then hold shift and click again and then click one more time and hold shift and click again. And then we're going to keep doing that. Um, click, hold shift, click, hold shift, click, click, hold shift, click, hold shift, click. Okay, we're going to do it again. We're going to do click, hold shift, click, hold shift, click. And imagine where this one might be. So click, hold shift, click, hold shift, click. And then this one, click, hold, shift, click, hold, shift, click. And this one, click, hold, shift, click, hold, shift, and click. And the last one I think is right about here. Click, hold, shift, click, hold, shift, and click. And that looks pretty good. So now I want to do one, add one more layer for the knot. And I'm not going to get fancy because this is a quick tutorial. So I'm going to take, once again, I'm going to take that brush and I'm going to make, I'm going to use my right bracket and make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to kind of do like an, almost like an, a little bit of an X, like something like that. And then now I'm going to take that and do effects and let's try outer shadow and just a teeny, just so you can see it. And I would say maybe a little brighter, just like that. I know it doesn't look great now, but it's okay. And then we'll do the same thing with this. We're going to do effects out of shadow. Now, if I was doing this for a client, it would be, I'd be much, much more careful about how to do this, but I'm just trying to get some kind of a look so you can see where the rope is. We're not really doing a shadow. We're just trying to shade it in a little bit, just so you can see the edges of the rope like that and that's good like that I think so let's take a look so let's do this we have string and then we have not K N O T is right there and this is our background and that's our balloons and then last I think on top I'm just gonna type congratulations and let's try maybe, I think a, some kind of a nice script. I think that's okay. You can curve it if you want, but I'm just gonna kind of keep it straight right now. And I don't know, we can give it an effect if you want. Let's say a bevel and emboss or a 3D. And I don't know. Let's just bevel and emboss it, but just make the, make the Make it, oh, not in pillow, I'm sorry. Let's emboss it like that. And just make it a slight embossing, just like that. Okay, did I spell that? I think I spelled that right. <laughs> Congratulations, okay, I hope. So there you go. So now this is, this is easy. Now what makes this a smart object? Let's save this first of all. File, save, and I'm saving it right now. And I'm gonna say, it's a girl. There you go. So now we have, and, and we can get rid of, I'm just going to get rid of these guides so it doesn't throw us off. And again, it's not a very pretty thing. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what you can do with this. So there it is. It's a girl. Now, how does a smart object work? Well, we can go into one of these balloons and then, I don't know which one it is. Hold on. There's the first one. And with the pick tool, double click on it. And what that does is it opens the original file. So now, if I turn off this one and turn this one on, and then do File Save, whoops, I don't save. Okay, 
And that's all I need to do then. And then I go back to it's a girl. It says it's a boy, right? And now go back again. And you have to double click. Don't ask me why. So I don't know if it's a bug, but it works. So what it did now is it changed them all. And let's go back to the full screen. And now it says it's a boy. So that's kind of what a smart object does. You can change this to anything you want. And I want you to check, I want you to notice one more thing. Watch this. If I took this, these balloons and say I didn't want them all to look the same, say these back ones, for example, I can go um, that levels. Let me see, curves. And I want to lower it. See how the back one's darker? And then I could pick another back one and do the same thing. Let's say curves. And I'm going to darken that one. And let's try this one too. Curves. And I don't know, can I do something else crazy? How about this one? Um, let's see, this one. I can give this an outer shadow. I'm, I'm not trying to be accurate here. I'm just trying to show you what I'm talking about. And I'll make the shadow go to the back or something. Something like that. Whoops, wrong way. Hold on. Let's make the shadow. I know this is crazy. This shadow makes absolutely no sense being there. But I'm just trying to show you if there was a shadow there. And then we're done, right? So now if I click on one of these balloons again, double. Now remember, there's different shades. These are darker, these are lighter. So I'll just click on any balloon. Let's do it again. And then turn off, it's a boy, turn on, it's a girl. And then go back to here. And it says it's a girl. Now let me see what I did wrong last time. If, I'm, if I have that, I think I should be able to just, I don't know, double click on it and then go back. And if someone could tell me why this is working, there we go. I had to click on the whole group because it was grouped. So I had to click on the whole group and then double, and then go back. It brought it full screen. So now it's a girl, but notice this. These, this one is darker than this, this one here. This one still has a shadow and it's a shadow over the pink color as opposed to the blue color. So you can save it any way you want. Now this isn't really a beautiful document and I'm not trying to do that. I am trying to just in a very short time show you the things you can do. And this is kind of the way smart objects works in Photoshop. It's not 100% the same, but there are things that you can do and it, you don't have to redo a whole document if you want to make some changes like this. Like, for example, if you had something you needed to show somebody, a client, and you wanted to show it in different ways, well, you wouldn't have to. If this whole thing document had so many different things to it, you wouldn't have to redesign the whole document. You just have to redesign the parts that are in the smart objects. So I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please click like and subscribe and have a good day. Thank you.